The scripture tells us it's very dangerous to put it off. That's what Jesus said. You must be converted if you're to enter the kingdom of heaven. Now why? First, for the forgiveness of your sins. You see, the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're all sinners. And what is sin? Sin is breaking the law of God. The law of Moses, the Ten Commandments. Have you ever broken the Ten Commandments? Jesus said that if you've broken them in your heart, you've already broken them. And if you've broken one commandment, you've broken all of them. So we're all lawbreakers. And that's what sin really means. It means breaking the moral law of God. So that we're all sinners. And we're born with that tendency towards sin. We have the seed of sin in us the moment we're born. David said, in sin did my mother conceive me. You were born in that direction so that the evil one that comes to tempt you, finds you easy to pick. When John the Baptist preached the gospel of repentance, preparing the way for Jesus to begin his public ministry, he said, behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. John the Baptist was right. All the way through scripture, the lamb is used as an expression of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. And when he died on that cross, they took him outside Jerusalem and they nailed him to the cross. Blood streamed down his fingers and his side and his feet and his head where the crown of thorns had been placed. And he suffered as no man ever suffered. Many people had been crucified, but he was suffering a different kind of suffering because he was suffering from the weight of your sins. He became guilty of your sins. Every lie that you ever told, every evil thought that you ever had was placed on Jesus. Everything I've ever done wrong was placed on Jesus. He bore the sins of the world. And that was his real suffering. And when he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? In that terrible and awful moment, he bore our sins. The scripture says he became sin for us. And Jesus said, if you do not believe that I am the one I claim to be, you will indeed die in your sins in John 8, 24. We need to be converted not only to find forgiveness of sin, but secondly, the acceptance by God. There's a word used in the New Testament. It's a big word called justification. Just as if I had never sinned. In other words, when you come to the cross by faith, repenting of your sins, and you receive Christ into your heart, at that moment, God acquits you. He forgives you. But he also places you in the sight of all the universe as though you'd never ever committed a sin. Therefore, being justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what do you have to do to be converted? There's several things. First, you must repent. Repentance is a matter of the heart and the mind. God sees the heart and he reads the mind. And if you really repent, you'll receive his power to turn from your former way of life. You see, the Bible teaches that the devil, who's called the God of this world, has blinded the minds of unbelievers. And the Bible says, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, neither can he know them for their foolishness unto him. You cannot understand what I'm talking about without the aid and the help of the Holy Spirit who's speaking to you right now. There's a little voice inside that's interpreting some of these things, convicting you, making you uncomfortable about your own sins and your own relationship to God. That's the Holy Spirit. And then not only should you repent, which means to change, change your mind, change your way of living. It means faith. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast. There's a nonfiction bestseller at the moment called Blind Faith. But I'm not asking you to come forward and put blind faith on the line. I'm asking that you put your faith in Jesus Christ and his shed blood on the cross.